Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I have with me a very, very unique and an amazing sports person from Connecticut, USA, Mr. Dave Stevens. Dave, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we can get together today. I'm really Thank you. Excited. It's going to be a unique experience. Thank you. Dave is, uh, in his own words, the only legless player in sports history to have played NCAA football. And those of you who live in the US will understand NCAA football. Those of you don't, it's another type of football, which is American football. Dave is also a seven-time Emmy winning sports journalist. He's a motivational speaker and television host. And as he nears 40 years in broadcasting, uh, 20 of which have been with ESPN. Dave is also a podcast host. So Dave, uh, let's start by asking you about your own amazing journey. Well, I'm very lucky. Uh, and again, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, right out of the gate, um, I was born without legs, um, put up for adoption. My birth mother never saw me. Uh, adopted by two wonderful, loving, um, older uh, people. Uh, my dad was a World War II vet, and my mom mm -hmm. was a housewife, and they got me in our foster care system, and they just instilled in me and raised me to be normal. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any other way. I didn't. I didn't know the term handicap or disabled, and I kind of just lived my life like that. And and I just realized at a young age that I wanted to do what everybody else did, and that included playing sports. And yeah. you know, I I ended up becoming pretty decent at sports where I was mm -hmm. able to turn my disability into my ability, mm -hmm. which led to opening so many doors in sports and college and television and broadcasting. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really lucky. I mean, I'm, I know there's a lot of uh, your listeners and viewers that, you know, the handicap world still is kind of shunned in society or, or hidden or, or just, you know, they don't do a lot for it. <laughs> it's the same in the United States. So mm -hmm. believe me, there's still a lot of battles that we have, yeah. but yeah. you know, I've been on this planet. I just turned 57 this week and I've lived the dream. I've done things Amazing. that people only dream of doing. And, uh, you know, now I continue to try to showcase that if you have a dream and you have those goals that you can pretty much achieve and succeed at anything mm -hmm. that you put your mind to, if you just work hard enough. Amazing. And more power to you. And uh, before I ask you the next question, if um, all our viewers are looking at the television screen behind Dave, they can see him playing his uh, sports. Um, and that, that's quite amazing. I was looking at that, Dave. Uh, so Dave, tell me, uh, what has been your motivation to reach the highest level of play? I think it's, you know, I had to compete with the best athletes. And then when I was young, back in the 70s and 80s, we didn't have special Olympics. We didn't have adaptive sports. So if I wanted to play, I had to figure out ways to be able to not be the last guy picked on your team or mm. have people say, oh, you know, we don't want him a part of this. He can't do anything. And so, you know, there wasn't any books for people without legs who wanted to play sports who are dummies, you know. And so I just had to figure out how do you catch a ball, you know, move around on my butt and mm. tackle and do all the things that, wow. that I do in American football or in our baseball, which is much mm. like cricket, you know, yeah. trying to hit that ball and trying to catch that ball and everything. Mm. And luckily I had coaches and friends that believed in me and instilled in me that, you know, as long as I could go out there and not, you know, be a detriment to a team that I could actually contribute in football mm. and in wrestling, which was my best sport. Wow. And, you know, so because of that, being seen on TV, having stories done on me, it led to a college scholarship. It led to a TV job at age 17. Um, and, you know, I've done all these things that, and it's a, it's, a, it's a nice term. I don't mean it in a bad way, but I label you all as leggies. I call all you leggies yep, out yep. there, people who mm. um, But, you know, whereas, like, uh, if you look over my shoulder in wrestling, I had the advantage because I knew what to do against mm. you leggies. You leggies didn't know what to do against me. So, you know, there's very few advantages a guy without legs can have, but in sports, there's, you know, I've got a low strike zone. So pitchers had a tough time throwing to me. Quarterbacks weren't looking for a guy, you know, on the ground trying to tackle mm. them. So, mm. um, and then I just took that into my everyday life as far as my career, wanting to be on TV, wanting to work 
mm-hmm. in the television business and and work and in and you know being able to interview celebrity athletes and stars the michael mm-hmm. jordans the lebron james the tiger woods uh mm-hmm. you know of of the world and and luckily they see me as you know just a normal guy and right. i've been very blessed to to be in this business a long time absolutely phenomenal and uh they've uh you know I, as i was watching the video i mean your your upper body is is seems to be very very strong my question i'm very lucky hmm. go ahead my question is what have some of your uh, no, go ahead go ahead dave you you on well, i'm very lucky because i've torn up my rotator cuffs i've had rotator cuff shoulder surgery three times on the right and one time on this one and you know i i'm breaking down you know again as you see I have to move around on my mm-hmm. arms. That, yeah. That's how I'm getting around. So it mm-hmm. takes its toll. But I luckily my my everyday life is my workout. So mm-hmm. I can, you know, kind of stay in upper body shape and yeah, you know, not get the belly that I see a lot of other people at my age getting mm-hmm. because I don't have a choice. I have to, you know, use my body to move around. So it, mm-hmm. it keeps me in shape even at yeah. my age. I've got three teen sons that I, you know, drive around and chase around that uh, that also keep me uh in shape and, and like i said i'm very very lucky that mm. i've had no health issues i've never had covid mm. i haven't had any of the things that uh you know that that uh, everybody goes through mm. i'm not going to have to have hip replacement surgery or knee replacement <laughs> surgery yes. the money i save on shoes absolutely you know? that's that's positive thinking well done well done and you know i'm i'm, I'm 66 so i'm seven eight years older than you are but i can see that you you know you're very very fit um and good luck with that. So, Dave, moving on, uh, you know, I've heard of people winning one Emmy, two Emmys. You've got you won seven, and winning seven Emmys is 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 a very very big deal. Tell me a little bit about these awards as a sports journalist. Yeah, I mean, I was very lucky to uh, start with ESPN in 1995, and uh, you know, I was the very first handicapped or disabled person that that network had ever hired. So, mm-hmm. starting out in a world where managers don't know how to treat you employees don't know you know what they should do you know mm-hmm. i had to find myself in that world and it, it actually gave me that opportunity like well, hey if these guys are going to wait around i'm going to go and take take you know take the world over and so right. um moving up the ladder at espn working on um our our sports center show that we have and mm. uh, all of the other NFL shows and baseball shows and all those kind of things. Mm. They realized I had a talent for helping to tell stories, to share those narratives, to mm. make a difference in that programming. And then you win one, you win two, you go to New York, uh, you know, and, and suddenly, you know, you've got these big old huge things that people think are fake. And, and mm-hmm. every time someone comes over to my house, they want to hold it up. They want to give an acceptance speech. They want to, you know, um, it's kind of funny, but I'm I'm so proud of those because, um, you know, they don't they're not participation trophies. They didn't mm-hmm. give them to me because they felt sorry for me. There's no label oh, that says Dave Stevens doesn't have legs. It's just Dave Stevens, associate producer on Sunday NFL Countdown, mm-hmm. and that's why they mean so much to me. Um, and uh, hopefully one day, you know, my kids will get a couple of them and they can, you know, and you know, share them and everything uh, because it is it's it's the epitome, I think, of my journalistic career, mm. you know, of, of winning something it's, that it's is so incredible. prestigious. It's absolutely yeah. incredible. And uh, as a, a, a motivational speaker, tell me some of the areas that you speak on. Well, I talk a lot about acceptance and, and inclusion. Mm. Um, I try to teach people empathy instead of sympathy so Mm -hmm. if they look at me you know when you judge that book by its cover you know you immediately pity someone or feel sorry for them because of what you see on the outside and people Mm. tend to forget the gifts that we have on that inside and so it's very powerful when a man walks out on the stage on his hands and and comes out and they get past that elephant in the room because i am the elephant in the room all the time Mm. everybody's staring at me at every moment of my day and i try to Mm. put people at ease with either my humor or trying to give them, you know, the opportunity to realize that, hey, I've, I've done these amazing things. I've played professional baseball. I've yeah. played, tried out for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, I've, I've, I've done things that you leggies only dream about doing it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but it also shows that, and I'm the perfect uh, poster child of, you know, you can do anything in life if you Absolutely. put your mind to it. You know, Absolutely. I started out, fifteen and fourteen. I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to play professional sports and I have those goals on tape where I said that, 
Mm. Whereas everybody else in my high school, they're still pumping gas or flipping burgers or doing mm. the things and they never got to fulfill their dreams. So, you know, and I think the biggest takeaway I want people to know that it's better to try and fail than to sit around daydreaming all your life, wishing I'd have done this. I wish I'd have tried to go out for that play, or I wish I'd have asked that man or woman out on a date, or I wish I'd have, you know, tried to do this. And um, I fail a lot, you know, but the good thing is I'm so low to the ground. I don't fall very far when I do fail. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of pick myself up, mm -hmm. you know, dust myself off and go back out there and attack the world. And mm -hmm. I think if other people can see, if I can do what little, you know, the amazing things I did with what little tools I have, you know, what's your excuse? What everybody else's excuse out there when they can mm -hmm. get up and walk and move around and pick up their kids and push a shopping cart and do all those things that I have to adapt to and do different ways. Amazing. So before I move any further, Dave, I'd love to talk a little bit about uh, your parents. What, because, you know, you have, you have got such a positive mind uh, and, you know, you told me so many times in the last few minutes that you, whatever you wanted to do, you went out and did it. You know, what was the kind of influence your parents had on you that made you into such a strong individual? I think because they never held me back. They never said, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I always in my brain, I'm not a genius, but I was always able to figure out ways to do things, you know, how to climb up on a, a chair and how to climb up to, to get to things and how to do that. And they saw that. So, you know, it was it was on the rest of the world to accept me for who I was. And, mm -hmm. and they really instilled in me that, you know, you are special. You are wonderful. You are a precious gift. And, and so, you know, that hammered into my head for so many years. It made me realize, hey, I am just like everybody else. And, yeah, I may look a little different, but you know, I want to go out there and, and achieve these goals. And and the sad part is that um, my mother, my adoptive mother died the day I left for college in 1984 from cancer. And then my dad died a year and a half later from cancer. And uh, that really was a, a tough setback for me. Um, I turned to drugs for a little bit, a period of time. It was the lowest period of time I, I got involved with cocaine and um, and, and I just, one day I, I was sitting in a jacuzzi tub at 2 a.m. in the morning, just poked out of my brain and I looked up and I, I thought, well, those people that believed in me, my mom, my dad, you know, coaches, parents, people, they could see me now. And I, and I just got out of that jacuzzi and got my scholarship back, went back to Minnesota, started playing football. I've been clean and sober since January of 1987. And, you know, that's why I. I haven't lived a perfect life. People look at me and go, oh, you're a hero. You're an inspiration, but I'm mortal. I'm just like you, you know, and I've made those mistakes. But the problem is if we don't learn from our mistakes and we can't improve and we can't grow, then we're just going to become drug addicts or bums or being on the street with a can saying, hey, I'll work for food or those kind of things. So, you know, losing my parents at such an early age was a disaster, but it also, you know, helped me to realize that, hey, I'm on this in my own and only I can make those changes and only I can do good. It's not like any other else is going to hand me, you know, you know, I could have lived on disability and just yeah. been, you know, a bum. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. And you know, you all, you answered my question because I was going to say, you know, after your parents, what were some of the low points and you answered them? Thank you so much for sharing, uh, you know, your deep thoughts with me. Uh, my next question to you is, and I I want to come to diversity equity in, in in after one more question, but you also Dave teach media and production to dis uh, disabled students and create job opportunities and careers. Uh, help me understand this with an example, and then tell me what goes into making a champion and training a champion. Uh, well, to the first question, I'm, I'm really lucky that during COVID, I started my own little podcast. And mm -hmm. because I had so many friends and celebrities, I got big names coming on a podcast that mm -hmm. may have been seen by six people. I don't know. Um, the university, uh, Quinnipiac University saw that and they were trying to develop a program in media because um, even though the disabled world is the largest minority in the entire world, mm -hmm. we have the biggest family um, we are the small, we have the smallest voice and only 3% yeah. of those with disabilities work in television or production or media or newspaper or mm. journalism. Mm. They just don't get those opportunities. Mm. So Quinnipiac uh, and I started Ability Media, which is we give these students 
uh, with disabilities, the opportunities to learn television, to go out into the world. I take them to events. I'm taking five students to our Super Bowl in Arizona the, uh, next wow. month to mm -hmm. experience that. And uh, we also get uh, you leggies and all you other normal people <laughs> that are now uh, have been a part of, of yeah. what you know we're doing. And so we get you know 15 students. And cool part is with with the students um, that don't have disabilities is they now have a new perspective on the world. They now look at hey, there's no ramp there, or how come they don't let this person in to mm. you know, eat because they don't have uh, facilities for them. And so it's been great. And, um, you know, I try to lead by example um, because you can't teach a person with a disability. You can't teach them courage. Mm. They have to grow and they have to be able to, you know, if they're not comfortable with their disability on camera, I have to find a way to hide that. If you have cerebral mm. palsy, Let's have you sit down when you do your interviews or your yeah, stand up right. so you mm -hmm. can be a success. We don't want to embarrass these kids. Mm -hmm. I want to instill that confidence in them that I have. Like, I'm cocky. I'm arrogant when I'm on stage. Mm -hmm. I love a microphone, but not everybody is like that. And, mm -hmm. and when you're stared at every day of your life, sometimes that it's really hard to go, hey, I want to be right. seen in public more. So, you know, when I try to create these kids, it's been great because. I've had a student uh, is now working for a newspaper in New Haven writing stories. Mm. I've got another student that is uh, working at an internship at a TV station doing on-camera things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as we discussed earlier, there's a lot of seen disabilities, but there's also a lot of unseen disabilities. Correct. And that's the problem if you have ADHD or any type of, uh, you know, mental disability or function or autism on spectrum or all those kind of mm. things. We've got them all. And it's my job to bring out the best in these students and, and set them up to get those opportunities that normally TV stations and newspapers don't offer them. Mm. But if you're, if you're faced with a great reel and somebody that can write good and they have a great resume, it's going to really help them to get those opportunities. And that's mm. all I want to do is just give us a shot. You know, Correct. I didn't say give me special treatment at ESPN because I don't have legs, but Look at my talent. Look what I can offer. Just Correct. the same as a black, a white, Muslim, yeah. Mexican, Hispanic. And let's just work together. You know, let's, we have great skills and gifts. We just need those opportunities. Absolutely. And Quinnipiac University is, yeah. is letting yeah. me do that. Hmm. And, you know, that is what I'm amazed about in my conversation with you. That you're saying, telling the world, treat me like you. Don't give me anything special. And I think that's such a powerful statement coming from you, Dave. Thank you. So let me now move. Well, there's an old saying. There's an old saying, and and I, 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 I can get away with saying it, but you know, hire the handicapped. They're fun to watch. Oh, you know, oh, that's a but as, as derogatory as that yeah. is, we do need those opportunities Absolutely. because when you watch us, you can watch the growth. You can watch how we impact other people in the world, mm. our coworkers, mm. our bosses, everybody mm. under us. So. Um, when people do see me, they, they are kind of shocked, like, wow, you did all that with Absolutely. no legs, you know? And so that, yeah. if I can have a girl in a wheelchair get on camera and, or a little person and all these people that I work with, you know, it's my job now. I'm like Batman trying to hand off to Robin. I need a new Robin. I need a new, you know, somebody in this world to come out like a Nick Bukovic and, and yeah. you know, just make an impact. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I would say, there is, there is so much of handicap people have in their mind. You know, we leggies, as you to use your term, there are so many handicaps in the mind, which we, we just assume that handicap has to be physical. No, I, I mean, I think there are a lot of us who have such warped thinking. And that, I think, is a yeah. much, much bigger handicap but that doesn't let you function. But, uh, Dave, moving on, uh, I want to talk to you about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, you know, you have fought this and you, you've come out right on top of this whole battle of uh, equity and inclusion. Based on all the experience that you have had, my question is that while there is a lot of talk, how much is actually being achieved? That's a great point. You know, everybody feels good in the moment when Dave comes on stage and they go, oh, I'm going to do this and this, and I'm inspired and everything. Yeah. And then, you know, a, a lot of it just never, just never comes to fruition. And then mm -hmm. there comes that time when we need jobs or we need opportunities and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, well, no, I, I, you know, and so we need more champions. We mm -hmm. need more people like you that are giving us that voice, this opportunity mm -hmm. briefly to share my story. And, mm -hmm. and there, 
as I said, I'm not a hero. There are so many more important stories out there of people missing arms and legs or overcoming accidents. You know, I work a lot of uh, football that I play uh, here stateside in charities with the Wounded Warriors, with our veterans who have lost limbs and lost legs. Those guys, I mean, talk about people that have overcome or been through something to, you know, I never had to learn how to write left-handed with a right hand mm -hmm. if I lost it in a bomb or yeah. in something like that. And, you know, in the tragedies that are going on in the world, in the Ukraine and that, there's going to be a lot more people with physical disabilities that have been hurt or bombed or everything. And, and I'm hoping a lot of these nations um, will step up real soon and, and just realize that there's a lot of good and, and just not that, you know, everybody builds up an amazing town at the World Cup and then they leave that town and the World Cup and they just leave all these facilities that are empty. And that's kind of like we are with the handicap world. We build us up and go, let's have World Handicap Awareness Day. Well, what about the other 364 days when we mm. really need those opportunities mm. and we need help and we just need that little push? Um, so it's like it's important that we don't, you know, it's great that we have success of looking at people and honoring them but I, like you said we, you get that one day and then it's over and we go back and then you know back on november 3rd okay it's handicap awareness day let's put pictures of people in wheelchairs out yes. tell them that we love mm -hmm. them you know mm -hmm. wow so do we have time for two more questions for you yeah. uh, my next question is that and continues with the dei what can society do to remove biases First off, it has to start organically when we build our buildings, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, I don't think we use a lot of architects and people when we're creating these beautiful buildings and things to, again, when you, you put in, you put in, ex, you know, a, a doorway and then you have handicapped parking or facilities, you know, five blocks away to get mm -hmm. into that building. It kind yeah. of defeats the purpose, but mm -hmm. we can build beautiful facilities that have ramps and, and those kind of things. But I think it's just, those companies and those leaders that are willing to take that chance, that are willing to find that next Dave Stevens as a lawyer, or that next Dave Stevens as a politician, or that next Dave Stevens as a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are so many of us out there. As I said, we're the biggest minority in the world. And right. the, the, the sad part is you could join our club at any time. You could have a stroke. You could be in an accident. You could get cancer. And you could become handicapped. I mean, mm -hmm. you, know, we, you can't become Jewish. You can't just become Japanese or, mm -hmm. or you know, you're born into that. Whereas right. in the disabled world, mm -hmm. you can join our world. So we need to have a more awareness of, you know, us being considered a minority and almost like a breed. And mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, you know, do we have enough blacks? Do we have enough whites? Do we have enough handicaps? And, mm -hmm. and just get them based on their ability, not just for a quota. You know, right. I don't, I need to get. 25% of this and 30% of this and 15% of this. Let's just look at that and maybe throw their resumes a little higher in the, in the, in the, in the pot to look mm -hmm. at them and go, let me take an in-depth look, you know, because it's that comfortability factor too. Yeah. Well, I'd rather not, I'd rather not deal with that in my office or my business because it's bringing in something we're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I've had to be on both sides of that as a manager and as an employee. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, if we can educate, businesses and our business leaders and at these summits you know get me on a stage overseas i'll be happy to showcase and, and do those kind of things mm -hmm. and just show people that we all have talent and like you said the unseen disabilities are just as debilitating Absolutely. as the seen disabilities mm -hmm. well said and my last question to you dave and this is for the thousands of people who will listen to our conversation based on your incredibly motivating journey and i'm no i'm i'm sure you've been through your own challenges etc what would you say are three lessons you want our viewers and listeners to take away well i for one um it's important to be motivated it's important mm -hmm. to set those goals you know mm -hmm. set those goals every day my, yeah. my goal every day is to, to get up out of bed get on the floor my butt is cold on the floor because mm -hmm. you know it's winter time but you know to set those little goals every day um to go out and, and make a difference in this world and yeah i think you know, people tend to you know especially around this time of year when we we have our new year's resolutions and they fall yeah. away it's like no it's like okay this year i want to get a job or this year i want to go to college or this mm -hmm. year i i you know i i want to 
you know, if I'm paralyzed, I want to be able to lift my arm a little bit. I'm going to work harder in my mm -hmm. rehab, you know. So that would be the first one. The second would be is to, you know, go out there and just make the most of the gifts that you have. Mm -hmm. you know, we're all blessed with something inside and you have to find out what that is, whether you can, yeah. you're a good singer, you're a good negotiator, uh, you're a leader, you're a follower. You have to figure out what you are as far as, you know, what you want to do in this life. And, yeah. you know, I've had, you know, I've had to change things in life, you know, as far as goals and morals and things like that. And then mm -hmm. the last one is to just don't be afraid. As I said earlier, it, it's better to try and fail. And so don't be afraid. Don't let anything hold you back mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and utilize those people in your life, your mentors, your friends, everybody to help you to achieve those goals. Because if you just sit around and, you're miserable your entire life, you know, what kind of life is that going to be? Totally. And I have lived the most amazing. Um, we have an American movie over here called Forrest Gump. Mm -hmm. And I say mm -hmm. I've lived a forest. I've lived a Forrest Gump life. You know, mm -hmm. I have done things that people with legs will never, ever dream okay. of doing. And, I, and okay. I'm so blessed that I could play baseball, which is, you know, equivalent to cricket. I can mm -hmm. play football, which is equivalent to rugby. And had I had I been in a foreign country, I would have been playing those sports too. That Absolutely. was my mentality. So you, you just, you have to move that mentality to, you know, challenge, you know, I, I would look forward to playing rugby someday and figuring out mm. why cricket matches can last eight days or you can play one, you know, all those kind of things that yeah. uh, we don't understand our ignorance yeah. over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Dave, what, an, what an amazing conversation I've had with you. I can't think of one which has been so, so, so interesting for me personally as a host. It's been fun. And like I said, you you can see over my shoulder, you know, I, you know I'm doing commercials. A legless yeah. guy's doing commercials for products and, and football fields. So, Absolutely. you know, if you want to see and believe, you know, you can Google Absolutely. me and, and look up videos yeah. and stuff like that. Just so you can see you guys don't let yourselves hold yourselves back. Well said. And on that note, uh, your three amazing lessons. It is important to be motivated, set daily goals and go out and make a difference. The second one you said was make the most of the gifts you have. And the third one you said, don't be afraid. I think that's such a powerful statement. Don't let anything hold you back. Thank you, Dave Stevens, for talking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your journey, about your Emmy Awards, about the, you know, all the, the, the kind of positiveness you have in your mind, in your heart, in your eyes, in your smile. Everything is coming out so powerfully in this conversation. Thank you also for speaking to me about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I sincerely hope a lot of people will listen to your thoughts and think of the 364 days uh, when they have to give inputs as well. Thank you for speaking to me, Dave, and good luck to you. Thank you. Hey, I'm a brand called me, so I really appreciate being on your show. So thank you, and God bless you, and uh, best of luck and uh, everything that you guys are doing. Appreciate thank it. you so much. Thank you for listening to The Brand Called You videocast and podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for The Brand Called You.